It's Capcom time. Time for your friends at the Capsule Computer Corporation to talk about some games that they've already announced. That is the the word that they have given. Um, so if, you know, I think some of us were coming into this thinking, well, maybe they'll talk Dragon's Dogma 2 here and some other stuff like that. But um, uh, no, it seems like no. Seems like a big no on that one. So further updates on already announced games. Um, so yeah, maybe they'll show some, yes, some, some gameplay from the Resident Evil 4 remake. Um, yes, Deep Down is finally, this is going to be 40 minutes devoted to Deep Down and um, a new Street Fighter character. Uh, I wonder if they'll do a new Street Fighter character already. That seems like it'd be weird. They just announced, announced Guile, but whatever, that whole roster is leaked. So why not? Why not? Um, hello, I'm Jeff Kirstman. We're here live on the internet. If you're watching this not live, then hello as well. I, what is it, what's it like in the future? I hope it's good. I hope the future is good. Uh, you can find out more about, uh, me and what we're doing here, um, at patreon.com slash Jeff Gerstman. That's a, that's a place you can go to, to find out more details on how you can, uh, support this or join the join the I don't have a good slick I don't have a slick uh, sales pitch for come on down we'll, we'll get you in a car everyone is getting approved for credit today get on down here join the conversation um, and uh, and come on around come on around to come on down to kids town at patreon.com slash Jeff Gerstman. Start the riot today. No? The nightmare continues at patreon.com slash Jeff Gerstman or Jeff.zone. I don't, you know, um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, hello. Uh, so, yes. So, the Capcom, I'm going to look at their Twitter real quick because I think they did say, hey, we're definitely going to have something on this game, this game, and this game. And one of those games is Exo Primal, which is the dinosaur game that they uh, showed. Um, are they just Capcom USA on Twitter? They're Capcom USA everywhere else. Nope, they're not. Are they just Capcom? They're, they, are, they do not have Capcom on Twitter. Wow. Uh, oh, they're Capcom USA underscore. Boy. Um, boy, <laughs> uh, 35 minutes of news and in-depth updates on previously announced Capcom titles, including Monster Hunter Rise, Sunbreak, Exo Primal, and Resident Evil 4. Yes, I guess we could call Resident Evil 4 an already announced game. Oh, you mean the new Resident Evil 4? Sure. Why not show some of that too? It'd be funny if they were just like, we got a sorry four news. Have you seen this game? You should get a You should get a GameCube. Have you seen have you, have you heard of the GameCube? They made one that's all chromed out. Plays DVDs. Anyway. Now we're gonna talk about PNO3. Um, their stream is, I, I wasn't sure if this was me or not. Let's go over and, uh, you know, we'll keep the volume down because, you know, they're, you know, oh, it looks like they're just showing trailers. So I guess that means, you know, if they're, if they're showing this trailer now, that means they won't show it again during the show. I hope, um, interesting setup here where, uh, on, on, on this, on this pre-show, I was not sure if this was me or if it was the stream, um, but then I saw a lot of people in the in their chat, in Capcom's chat, just being like, hey, fix the frame rate. So um, both on YouTube and on Twitch, it's doing this. And um, so hopefully when they start the show for real, it will run properly. But hey, um, the Game Awards stream is smooth. Are they just running clean feeds over there? I, I'll, uh, I'll leave it to Keeley. Oh yeah, this looks significantly better. 
Um, it's about 10 seconds behind, but it seems to be running acceptably well. So I am going to bounce out on this one and pop out this one. And, uh, and then I'll make it the size I want to watch it at. And then I will crop it. I will uh, chop it. I'll crap an inch. I will beep them and boop them. Uh, transform. Fit to screen. Let's make sure that's not chopping anything off. That's been an interesting OBS thing. These past couple of days on these streams is going like, oh, it's chopping off the image. But this one seems to be good. This looks like the full job, as it were. Did I get my water problem fixed? No. <laughs> I mean, yes, but no, no. Uh, uh, they're going to come out tomorrow, and they're going to um, put a new coil of some sort inside of my unit, and they're going to flush the like refill the refrigerant and do a bunch of other things. And, uh, and then at the end of it, I am going to give them $4,000 and then we're going to smile at each other and they're going to leave. That's how, uh, that's how my day tomorrow is going to go. And then there's the water. And then there's the issue of the corner of this room here being, uh, all full up of, of water where, uh, I now have a heater laying down pointed at the carpet I am pretty sure that there is not wood under this. I'm pretty sure there's like a gravel slab or some kind of, um, you know, something that is not wood, which would be nice because wood will rot when it stays wet. Uh, I may have to replace the carpet or the carpet pad or something like that, but all sorts of other stuff. Lift the carpet. I will lift the carpet, but I cannot lift the carpet right now. So we're doing what we can in the midst of a lot of other things happening. So, so yeah. Um, so far in the pre-show, it looks like they've been showing a lot of trailers that they've, they've already kind of shown. This is the, what is this? Is this Capcom arcade cabinet two? And then there's, isn't there a separate fighting game collection? I forget. Let's turn it up. Capcom, Capcom Arcade Stadium second. Hey, download Sun Sun for free. You want that Sun Sun Sun? Get that shit for free, son. Uh, Baka Yo Yo in the, over in the Discord asking, did the Stream Deck invite come in? No. <laughs> I ran through because th there's all these things that'll calculate like based on other people's numbers and all this other stuff, we'll predict when your Steam Deck invite is going to come in. And I did that last night and said, with 100% certainty, we're going to say you're going to get your Steam Deck update on June 30th. <laughs> I'm like, okay, like the last the last possible day of Q2 for an invite to come out is what you're saying. Okay. Okay. I'll take it. Uh, honestly, like if, if, if yeah, if I if only have to wait a couple more weeks here to get, uh, get a Steam Deck, I'll be pretty happy about it, I guess. Get a maintenance contract for air conditioning and heating. Yes, I, yeah, I, I, yes, they, I, uh, I do, I do have a, a thing with the company I've been going to for this stuff. Um, but parts are parts and this is that. So that's four grand after the discount and, uh, all the other stuff that comes with their things. So, um, yeah, so uh, as I said, we'll get some info on the Monster Hunter expansion here. We will get some Exo Primal stuff. We'll get some Resident Evil 4 stuff. And I wonder if that will be it. I personally, I would love to. Um, I would love to see some additional Street Fighter stuff. It's been a, it's been fun seeing so much of that game. Uh, over these past few days, getting out there and playing some of it myself and, uh, you know, the Guile announcement and the leaks and all that sort of stuff. But yeah, it seems like they could announce another character here, right? Um, and yeah, people asking for Dragon's Dogma 2, but they have, they have gone ahead and said that they are focusing on previously announced games. And so that would preclude the appearance 
of a Dragon's Dogma sequel. Um, uh, they tweeted that Street Fighter 6 news was done for a while from human instrumentality in the chat. So maybe we will not see any more of that here. Uh, so maybe it'll just end up being those three games and maybe they'll just be like, we told you what was going to be there. I don't know why you got all weird about it. We said what it was going to be. And now Mario Nintendo 6543 <laughs> says they said there will be a surprise or two. Okay, well. Hell, I don't know. That's the problem with all of the pre-show talk about like, we're doing, we're only talking about stuff that's previously announced. We're only talking about this. We're only, and then they slide one game in and say, actually, here's the secret thing. And you're like, okay, like you can't take any of this at face value because even when they try to tell you, they lie about it. And then they're like, surprise. Don't you love the surprise? You love surprises. Here's a Capcom thing that didn't leak, but it kind of did. And you're like, oh, okay. Like, what do we, what, what do we... But they, they still feel the need to say something to try to set expectations. Because when they don't do that, then people come in and go, this is going to be all bangers, all brand new games. And um, and then it's not that and people get pissed. I don't know. There, there's, I, I think the, the, what's been like, what, the last year or two maybe that it's, we've started to see more of the, like, hey, we're going to get out ahead of this and say, we are not showing more smash brothers or you know like whatever you know like this there's not going to be any pokemon news during this stream or this is a this is not a playstation vr2 stream like those sorts of things and uh even as companies have tried to signal uh those sorts of things to set expectations it's just it i i feel like people still come out of it uh super disappointed no matter what shows up you know and there's really no winning with that stuff and uh I feel for anyone in positions of like trying to figure out like what's the right way to announce this stuff that it's hey this stuff is cool it's not like you know, mind blowing brand new like we're not coming out and you know we're not straight up announcing a new Mega Man re you know or, or whatever like we're not saying there's going to be a brand new Bionic Commando here uh but we think that this monster hunter dlc that we've talked about before is still cool you know like like that it's it's got to be hard when you've got a roster of like okay people only want to hear about the bangers but we want people to know more about this dlc uh being able to sample these iconic sounds is a dream come true come true there were a lot of great sound effects to play with, and I had a lot of fun composing this song. Ah, Popeye! There were so many interesting songs! I struggled to choose which ones to sample! And here we go! <gasps> these are very fancy numbers I appreciate the lighting the shadows on these numbers <laughs> zero wait zero Mega Man Z zero yes yeah, Street Fighter zero bringing the Japanese versions of the Alpha games to America. Why not make the O the Capcom O and showcase also? I mean, you know, you have a lot of letters Hello, to everyone. work with. Welcome to the Capcom showcase where we'll share exciting new updates on our upcoming games. We have some surprises in store and hope you enjoy the show. Okay, some surprises in store. Let's begin. Enjoy your gaming. Hello everyone, I'm Ryozo Tsujimoto, producer of the Monster Hunter series. Did Thank anyone see the Monster Hunter movie? Capcom Showcase. We're excited to bring you the latest info on Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak. Speaking of Monster Hunter... Will finally be released at the end of this month. To kick things off, we've got a brand new trailer to show you. 
Yes, it was so-so. Hell no. A lot of no's. Yes, Let's it's awful. I meant to watch it. I, one of these days, I'm going to catch up on all the video game movies that have come out of the last couple of years. Because they all seem like winners. Actually, Sonic sounds like it's it's legit good. Now, what if I could play Monster Hunter as the cast of Darkstalkers? Or is Beautiful Joe? Sure, yeah. What if I could do literally anything with Beautiful Joe in 2022? Or 2023? I don't know. Do you think that, like, a, do you think Capcom would make a good new Beautiful Joe game, or would it just be a bummer? You look like you still got that fire inside you, old Gallius. You do as well, good elder. What do you say? Full steam ahead. Full steam ahead, steam. You're probably wondering how I got here. Oh, jeez. I liked Monster Hunter World quite a bit. Way more than I thought I would. Rise is neat, but I, it did not... It did not do it for me the way World did. Uh, Enjoy your gaming. First, let me introduce jungle. a returning locale. The jungle area that debuted in the second generation of Monster Hunter games is back in Sunbreak. You'll notice that the jungle's appearance changes the over jungle time. is back. It's a nostalgic area that both veteran hunters and new players are sure to enjoy. And of course, we've updated the Big jungle. Big up with to the Monster Hunter Massive. Jungle is back. Return in Sunbreak. Longtime fans can look forward to exploring the devastated ruins around the coastal area. From the Monster Hunter Frontier series comes Frontier. Espinas. I like Monster Hunter Frontier. In Spanish. As the name implies, For those of you who don't habla espanol. Normally, Espinas enjoys a quiet life in Spanish. Espinas is Spanish for. Nearby, it explodes into a violent rampage. The Espinas. Can docile, Espinas has a two-faced nature that can be extremely dangerous. That two-faced Espinas, like hanging out, just having some drinks, and then. The You're talking trash behind my back? That seems uncool. Magala is back. Gormagala is a sightless creature with black scales and sensitive wing membranes used to sense the presence of prey. As Gormagala's sensing ability increases, its two horns change form and it enters the frenzy state. While this is how it happens state, for me too. It gets so powerful that the ground beneath begins to break. With blue chew. And it uses its huge claws as an anchor during powerful attacks. When I enter my frenzy state. In addition, the trailer also shows the Daimyo Hermitar and the Pyrorachna Kadaki subspecies, which adds explosive elements Wait, the trailer, its fiery uh, debut. There are still more oh, okay, they showed the trailer, now they're describing the trailer. I've, tuned for more I've, I've already... Announcements in the future. Okay. Yes. Latest There's information. There's one more thing I want to share with you all, so please watch the following video. The jungle is back. Let's go. 
Try out a super tough quest. Why don't you? What's up? Slay Malzino here. Uh, I know you're saying, hey, Slay, what's up? A free demo and for I'm just saying, Rise just Sunbreak kicking it, dog. Just kicking it, dog. The demo will be available to download as shown. In the jungle locale, introduced today. I like when they don't speak be the dates because they record the VO before, before they've locked down the, the data. Like, the data is on the screen. As well as new silk bind attacks will be available for Boy. We'll have Slay Malzino. After mastering the basics, you'll be ready to take on other monsters in the demo to test your skills. For veteran hunters, an advanced quest will also be available, where you can take on an extra challenging version of Sunbreak's flagship monster, Malzino. The demo supports multiplayer for up to four players, and there's no limit to the number of times you can attempt quests. Much like Master P, there is demo. no you limit. Download it from the Nintendo eShop and Steam store page. Also, we would like for you to keep two things in mind. Notice regarding purchases. Please make them. See you, see you soon. So you will be able to enjoy all the added contents. Okay. Seven Star Hub Quest, Serpent Goddess of Thunder. And then you gotta download a bunch. Following Sunbreak's release, we plan to release a number of free title updates. Please enjoy this quick video preview of what's on the way. Okay, I will. Ah! Lucent Narga Kuga! Our first title update scheduled for August 2022. Oh, wow. This monster will be a part of the first free title update to come to Sunbreak post-launch. In addition to the Lucent Nargakuga, we're also adding a new area, the iconic Forlorn Arena. With future title updates, we plan on including additional monsters, variants, and more. Our title update Sounds about right. schedule is as follows. The second title update is planned for a Fall 2022 release. The third title update will come in Powered winter up monsters. In winter, we got juiced up monsters. In, in 2023, 2023, we're not even going to tell you. Each title update will include additional monsters and other elements. It'll be hyped, It'll be hyped, be hyped up monsters. Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak. Y'all got that uh, Lucent uh, Nar Narga Kuga? Meet, meet you in the bathroom. Okay, all right. Okay, all right. Digital pre-orders for Sunbreak well, okay. are now available on both Nintendo Switch and Steam. Hey. Pre-orders will also receive a special bonus Palamute and Palico layered armor set. We're planning on keeping you updated with more information soon. Please visit the official website and follow Monster Hunter social channels for more info. That wraps up our news for Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak. Thanks for tuning in and enjoy the rest of the Capcom Showcase. I will. I maybe. I mean, I hope I will. Now we will present the Capcom Spotlight Corner. Street Fighter VI coming soon. Oh. The next generation they're making, wait, of Street they're making Fighter a new Street Fighter in development and has something fun for everyone to enjoy. Fan favorites Ryu and Chun Li will be heating up the battle stage right alongside some of the newest fighters. Have you read the uh, description of Luke? With breathtaking it's new like visuals, they've set out to make the biggest unprecedented battles with the all new douchebag. He's like he's Street in a PMC and likes to train. He has to teach people MMA. That will allow you to experience the Street Fighter universe. But then also it's like, and he likes what PC games and wacky T-shirts. And you're like, wait, Move what are you saying? Like I don't. Announcement later this year. Celebrating the 35th anniversary of the Street Fighter franchise, the Capcom Fighting Collection. <laughs> Here's a bunch of characters that are not part of Street Fighter on the screen. Included is All right. the first ever release of Red Earth outside of arcades. Hyper Street Fighter 2, 5 Darkstalkers titles, and more. 
Ah, uh, yes, for the 35th anniversary of Street Fighter, here is a lot of Darkstalkers games and Red Earth. All of the titles included uh, will be playable online. I mean, this is this seems like so a cool collection. I don't, you know, your but like presenting it that way is uh, interesting. Of online matches. Interesting. Capcom Fighting Collection will launch on June 24th, 2022. Pre-orders are available uh, now. Some folks, uh, Duke, the Duke in the Discord asking about Street Fighter announcers and stuff like that. We'll talk about it on the podcast tomorrow. The I think we'll probably get into it a little bit more there. Capcom um, Arcade Stadium. Has the short expanded. version is, I think that the announcer stuff will serve a very Capcom Arcade interesting Second purpose, Stadium, but uh, July 22nd, 2022. You know, pot potentially, I, I get why people Saturday might find it annoying. Night Slam Masters, Magic Sword, Black Tiger, oh. Eco Fighters. And more. We finally Combined live in a world where Black Tiger is getting re-released. Arcade titles. In addition to a bundle that features, I love the Speed Rumbler. I love the Speed Rumbler. That game is good. Features. The car feels good. The car spins good. Options. It's a fun shooting game. It's it's a fun car, Mad Maxy kind of thing. For free when downloading the base game. I love the Speed Rumbler. The bundle featuring all 32 titles is available for pre-order now. Get display frame set one as a bonus Ooh, for pre-order. Display frame set one. To celebrate, get the Capcom Arcade Stadium title, Street Fighter II, The World Warrior. Now, what is this? Free for a limited time. We hope you try out the Capcom Arcade Stadium as well. Next up is an update on Capcom's new team-based action game, Exoprimal. All right, something something new, new. Hi, everyone. I'm Takuto Hiraoka, director of Exoprimal. We have a new trailer to show today that includes lots of gameplay. Let's take a look. Let's. Enjoy your gaming. I am the artificial intelligence, Leviathan. Hello, I'm Jeff Gerstmann from the Internet. Your personnel data indicates you are a suitable specimen to join an ongoing experiment. Oh. Uh, Under I my mean, supervision, I want to help. Corp conducts its most important research here. Welcome Whoa. to Bikitoa Island. I don't, I don't like that. You have been selected for a live combat test. The first team to complete their assignment wins. My archives encompass exhaustive records of human history. These annals are riddled with errors and institutional bias. Your species is susceptible to mass delusion. Fascinating. I mean, you know, humans dread it's been a rough other. You seek to evolve. Five, six you years here. To change. You tear down curtains, yet fear revelations. Even when what is revealed is of your own creation. Combat data is required to develop the exosuit. At IBS, we're always reaching for better. Always. Humanity resists quantification, an interesting variable. Within your behavior lies the answer. What is very So is the whole game then set inside of this, like, test concept? Humans, fight and die for me. I mean, I don't see why not. It's, I mean... Carnage module online. <laughs> carnage module. Oh shit, the carnage module is online. Calculating chance of employee retention. Chance calculated at 8.7%. Well, it's like, uh. It's like they wanted to kind of write a GLaDOS kind of thing and did not. You will now witness a small did not. of the war game. Until we can figure out how to destroy the bomb. Okay, so it's like a larger story about like, you know, we've got to go out there and fight the dinosaurs for the robot man, but then also we have to escape from the robot man. That's a premise. I'll take it. Looks silly. We hope you enjoyed the trailer. Now, I will get into more detail about the game. You shoot things like dinosaurs. Thank you. Leviathan is a next-gen AI that guides players throughout Exoprimal via voice navigation and augmented reality displays. 
Leviathan appears before players as a massive human-like figure or as a surveillance drone called a watcher. The trailer shows Leviathan unleashing hordes of dinosaurs. Players will battle these dinosaurs after being forced into Leviathan's infinitely repeating It'd be cool if there was more than dinosaurs, if, if, you know, like the idea of like, oh, sure, all right, what? Solve the mystery by playing the main game mode, Dino Survival. Dino Survival, our main game mode. Let me provide a brief gameplay introduction. Exoprimal is a team-based action game. In Dino Survival, two squads of five race to complete objectives. Teams must follow Leviathan's directives and complete the mission before their rivals to win. Mm -hmm. These directives will feature a dynamic mix of missions. In fact, we just saw some in the latest trailer. There's dinosaur call. Like the idea that like the robot, the, the, that the AI dinosaur. has, you know, access to defense, whatever all of human's history, you know, onslaught. and so on and so forth. It'd be kind of cool if it was more than just dinosaurs. It was like, oh, in this level. Destroy targets in Omega Charge. It's Powerful fish. Omega I don't know. And, you know, it's like, hey, here's your dinosaurs. Here's your teams compete to collect the most Nazis. Energy. Here's your Nazi dinosaurs. You also saw a your of Act Three and terrifying creature known as a Neo Tyrannosaurus. Ah, uh, yes, a Neo Tyrannosaurus. While there are situations where you directly engage enemy players, there are other times where you band together with rivals to take down a major foe. This variety of missions will keep players on their toes. In Dino Survival, the missions change based on players' progression through the game. The experience will be different every time you play, even in matches with familiar surroundings and objectives. By playing Dino Survival, you will unlock Cameron story is saying that this sounds like the premise of Deep Down. And also hmm. earn rewards, such as Interesting. experience points, to increase your player and I mean, exosuit levels. Sure, maybe Deep Down turned into this. We'll provide more details about Somewhere this along the way, I could... I could. a later date. I could believe that. Dino survival. Let's move on to exosuits. Let's move on to exosuits. Two new exosuits today. Barrage is an assault roll exosuit. It uses explosives to set areas ablaze and bombards enemies with ricochet grenades. Vigilant is also an assault roll exosuit. It wields okay. a destructive railgun to snipe from long range. We have even more exosuits to share with you in the future, so look forward to upcoming announcements. If they throw enough different suits in there to give you like some real choices to make when you're kind of building your teams, instead of it just being like, well, this is the only tank uh, exosuit and we need a tank, so you have to play this one. Closed network test to be held. Help us test the game's online infrastructure and make improvements ahead of launch. Have you considered Nazi dinosaurs? Sign up to participate. Can I? Where do I? Can I? Can I file that feedback? The closed network test will allow you to experience Dino Survival before the game's launch next year. We look forward to having you join in. We're hiding over here. We're looking at him from the side. That's all for today. Don't tell him. Ah. We plan to release Exoprimal in 2023. I plan to do a lot of things in 2023, then, okay? Keep an eye on our website and social media. That looks uh, that looks Thank potentially all right. Watching. Hey. You know, it looks like a Next, we have a message about Left for Dead-ish sort of we thing. Here's a message about Dragon's Dogma. Well, leave us alone. If we were going to make another one of these, we would have made it by now. Yeah, I know there's some weird PC build of it that internally we've been playing multiplayer on for a decade. Please visit the anniversary website. Thanks. Hi, everyone. I'm Hideaki Atsuno, game director at Capcom. A few weeks ago, we celebrated the 10th anniversary of Dragon's Dog. Do you think he's had that for 10 years Thanks or did he just get that made? For joining us in this celebration. I guess it depends the on if the arms say Dragon's 10th Dog anniversary or not. Has since spread to it's got patches on the arms. Kinds of media. Ranging from games such as Dragon's Dogma and the Dark Arisen expansion, uh -huh. to digital comics and a Netflix original animated series. I just like days, how creepy it looks when you climb on the monsters. Video celebrating 10 years of Dragon's Dogma. And that's it. Thanks. Talking about how and what Dragon's Dogma came to be. Yep. And that's so all we've you're got. A longtime fan or just curious about the series. 
we'll have something for you to enjoy. We hope you check it out. Me? Once again, thank you all. We made a video. It's not here where we're showing a bunch of videos. We have a separate... Uh. And now we have a bunch of updates from the Resident Evil franchise. Uh, just tease it out as long as you can. Tease it for an another 10 years and then put the sequel. Thanks to all of our fans, Village has sold over 6 million units worldwide. Everyone on the team is incredibly happy to see so many people enjoy the game. Are you kidding me? That's so that's incredible. I love I, the audat I love it. To bring fun it's audacious. Around the world. Just like, hey, we want long we're putting out a video to celebrate the last 10 years. Evil, to enjoy this but it's story super franchise. not here. This thing. Let's start with this video. I mean, you know, if it's like I, w I would not want to have a big, long breakdown of the past of Dragon's Dogma in the middle of this anyway, but uh, Is pretty fucking far from all right. I can show you things even Chris doesn't know I can do. I want to live a normal life. I'm sorry, I, you know, I, I, I can't get over that they. They just said, like, hey, we got a video coming up on YouTube uh, about Dragon's Dogma. And um, uh, we're going to talk all about, you know, we've got 10 years of this. Did you know that there was a Netflix show about it? Back when Netflix would do a show about anything, they did one of this. Isn't that weird? I mean, it is weird. But, uh, hey. Oh, now we have a new little rabbit to pursue. Please just stop indeed. No. It's time. Marking the target. Fuck it's yeah. No. What huh. next? Okay. Yeah. I, I mean. Sure. Now I am the big lady stepping on people. This is what I've actually been waiting for. Person mode. It's just a weird bullet point. Third person mode. But that'll, yeah, I mean, that'll be a major change, right? Sorry to keep you waiting. So We're if you can be the big lady, the I wonder, you know, do they do? I, you want like a dead space year. style stomp move we think that this auto targets zombie nuts, way. right? Like that's, you just want <laughs> just that crushing move over and over again First, with big lady. Wait, first person mode? Oh, first the third person mode. We Got it. To add it into the game. Now, you'll be able to see Ethan as he desperately fights for survival. Players that have already experienced Ethan's journey can enjoy the new perspective and animations too. The Mercenaries returns with additional orders Neat. in an arcade-style action game where focus has been put on the exhilarating feeling of defeating relentless hordes of enemies. It's about New time we got a game about defeating as well as a horde of some kind. Such as Chris Redfield and Heisenberg. Of course, Lady Dimitrescu will be there too. We've really fueled this mode up. Enjoy looking down on your foes from over nine feet above as Lady Dimitrescu slashes her enemies aside. The third edition is one you've surely been waiting for. An additional story, Shadows of Rose. Today, let me introduce just a bit of this story. Okay. Rose, the beloved daughter of the main protagonist, Ethan, is now a grown-up main character in this new story mode. In this sequel to the main story of Village, you can experience Rose's struggles with the terrifying powers she was born with. To break free of the curse of her powers, she enters the consciousness of the Megamycete, there, she meets a girl who looks just like her. 
In this mysterious realm of consciousness, time and space is warped beyond recognition. And that Rose gum you is like by a being is going to come back in style. Who might be of assistance with removing her powers. Shadows of Rose is set completely in a third-person perspective. In the realm of consciousness, you won't only face creatures, but the world itself seems to be attacking you. Enjoy the horror of the world itself being your greatest enemy. There's going to be a lot of goop. How will Rose find freedom from her mysterious powers? The DLC for Resident Evil Village Winter's Expansion includes all three of these major additions. In addition, Resident Evil Village Gold Edition, a bundle of Winter's Expansion with the base game, will Makes be sense. released simultaneously. The release date is planned for October 28th, 2022. Resident Evil RE-verse will also begin service on the same date, October 28th, 2022. We hope that you are looking forward to it. Yeah, we'll see that thing. How that thing. Remember that thing? Remember they still they're still like doing that? that. How'd you like that? Also, as already announced, we are working on making the main story of Village available on Mac so that even more people can enjoy Resident Evil. In addition, the main story of Village is planned to be playable on PlayStation VR 2. We're working hard on bringing you the ultimate immersive experience worthy of next gen. In we are repacking this Village. game in a lot of different ways that will actually so be kind of fucking cool. Up next, a game that was announced just a few days ago. Oh, right. <laughs> so I was like, I, what is, oh, yeah, yeah. I forgot what they, you know, I, I it's, I'm, uh, I am sh ashamed that this information has left me, but, uh, you know, I've never been the biggest Resident Evil fan, but what is the name? They're not zombies. What are they, what did they call them here? When they decided to make them not zombies? Gunder Wonderroost. I've located baby eagle. Ganados. Las Plagas. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense, I guess. For those of you who don't, ah, blah, it's been, no. Yeah, I think, you know, the, if you really want to get into what probably yes, sent me mean. against Resident Evil 4 back when it first came out, it is probably color blindness related because the red dot sight on that gun, I basically couldn't see it at all. Um, and so I found the shooting to be super shitty. <laughs> um, but I wonder how much of that was related to that. And um, I know they, they in, in later it versions of the games, they did change that. Um, but yeah, I, I, I never really... Because I was never a big Resident Evil fan to begin with, I was just like, okay, well, the shooting makes this pretty much unplayable, right? Like you, the way you aim, if I could just the way you aim, right? Me. Like I just couldn't aim at anything, and so because I could not Even see what I was aiming at, or how how I was aiming, rather. This time, it can be different. It has to. This time, there's zombies. Okay, we're done fucking around with weird names. They're just zombies. Hi everyone, I'm Yasuhiro Anpo, director of Resident Evil 4. And I'm Yoshiaki Hirabayashi, producer of Resident Evil 4. Hello gentlemen. This title is a reimagining of Resident Evil 4, based on the original 2005 release. Similar to other titles in the series, we are carefully preserving what makes the original title special, while updating it with modern flourishes for everyone to enjoy when it launches in 2023. Today, we'll reintroduce a bit of the game's story. Resident Evil 4 is set six years after the events in Raccoon City, depicted in Resident Evil 2 and Resident Evil 3. Okay. The main character of the game, Leon S. Kennedy, survived the Raccoon City incident and was assigned as an agent directly under the President of the United States. Leon is dispatched He's incredibly to a pretty. village in Europe as part of a mission to rescue the kidnapped daughter of the President. 
You might notice Leon is much more mature and fearless due to his past experiences. The Ganado, the main enemies of this game, wait There we go. The experience of being attacked by hordes of crazed Ganado is truly an iconic moment from Resident Evil. In order to truly bring out the concept of terror of people controlled by madness, the Ganado have been completely redesigned. They're just QAnon now. Let's take a closer look at the game itself. The over-the-shoulder camera returns, of course. Leon arrives at a dense and dangerous forest. We want to nail the feeling of loneliness and fear of not knowing what lies ahead, even more so than the original. Of course, there will also be thrilling battles. I love thrilling battles. I was born for thrilling battle. I played the recent Resident Evil 2 and Resident Evil And laying down. I was born for laying down, mostly. Look forward to future announcements, where we'll have more information on the game. Resident Evil 4 is being developed for PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, Series X. I feel like I would have led an announcement with this game with like a joke about the shopkeeper or something. Like that would have been the the in intro to the first trailer or so, like the the little teaser or whatever. Enjoy. Like So please look forward to it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so, so much. much. That's probably what I that's probably what I would have done. What are you buying? Resident Evil 4. In March of 2023. What did you think about the latest information on Resident Evil Village and Resident Evil 4? That's an English only thing. Yeah, that's a good point. That it's, uh. For those that can't wait for the That might not work worldwide. Enjoy your gaming. You heard of this? Biohazard? You heard of this thing? Yeah, is this, I mean, what are they? I, I was fucking babbling, so I don't know how they set this up. Okay, yeah. I was gonna say they're gonna just gonna put these out again, right? That's the that's the plan. Resident Evil Seven, which brought the series back to its survival horror roots, and the from whatever the fuck it was titles, before that. Resident Evil Two. I mean, did you even play Five and Six? And what were they even doing anyway? These three titles, built with RE Engine. Return with current gen features including support for 4K, high frame rate, and ray tracing, as well as 3D audio for an even more immersive experience. Yeah, will they remake? Yeah, when's the full on remake, remaster of uh, Resident Evil 5? In addition, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One players can enjoy a free digital upgrade to current gen via the digital upgrade program and smart delivery. Good on them. For Good on them for not charging extra for that. Update patch will be available on the same date. For newcomers and veterans of survival horror alike, we hope you enjoyed the immersion these new versions offer. Welcome to the family. Oh, jeez. Welcome oh, to today. To the family. That's all for today's announcements. Welcome to the family. Thank you. That wraps up today's show. We hope you're as excited as we are about some of our upcoming games. Thank you to everyone, new and old fans alike, for tuning in. New fans. We like, I've, I've never heard of this Capcom. I figured I'd watch this thing, see what these video games are about. Wow. A lot of zombie video games over there, huh? Um, okay. See what I'm talking about? The, uh, the, you know, it's hard to manage expectations and all that other stuff. And 
you know, people are like, oh, we we got, and they're like, even they're like, we've got some surprises for you. And I guess the surprises are what it's, it's that these other Resident Evil games are getting their upgrades today. And the surprise is we have a 10th anniversary dragons surprise. A 10th anniversary dragons dogma video will be released to YouTube in the coming days. Um, okay. Yes, I, I, you know, ultimately, Pat, thank you for linking to what, <laughs> okay, yes, the, the Austin Walker reaction is all I really want out of any of this Dragon's Talk with stuff. And when they finally get around to announcing, hey, they're going to make a sequel or whatever, that is the other reaction I want. <laughs> Oh, man. Oh, well. Shut it down. Um. So. That's again, that's fine, right? I mean, you know, how do you how do you manage that? You're like, OK, we we shot our big Street Fighter wad at all these other shows that we know more people are going to watch, right? The the Summer Game Fest kickoff. Uh, you know, there, there's going to be some stuff there. So, you know, like, like they, they, they placed their stuff appropriately. The, the Sony, the state of play thing, um, you know, th those are stages that are going to get more viewers than a dedicated Capcom show. So they're, I think they're right to go like, okay, we're going to put the big new announcement, the big, the big street fighter stuff on these other programs. But then they're like, oh, we've got more that we need to show we'll put together a stream, but we need to get out in front of it and say, hey, this is going to be about previously announced games, and we've got stuff about Exo Primal, and that's unreleased and new, so there's that, and we've got a bunch of Resident Evil stuff that, like, is going to hit really hard for specific people. They're going to be like, oh my god, they're doing all this really cool Resident Evil stuff, and that stuff sounds awesome, but it's not brand new video game. It's not like, and here's, you know, here's the crazy shit, because we did the Resident Evil 4 thing elsewhere, too, because, again, we want maximum eyeballs on all that sort of stuff. But we also want to tell people about the coming DLC for Monster Hunter and, and all that sort of stuff. So, you know, they have to get that information out there. I think it's totally fine and understandable to do a show such as this. But, again, it's, it's you know, I think you end up with a lot of people who are just like, oh, God, I can't believe they didn't show I can't believe there's no new Mega Man game. Where I can't believe that the Black Tiger reboot wasn't here. Where's Dark Void 2? You assholes. Um, you know what I mean? So, yeah, I, I think that like managing announcements in this day and age uh, and, and all that sort of stuff. And uh, yeah, where, where's the new F Phoenix Wright? Why isn't there a new rival schools? Like there's someone out there who's just like, I can't believe another one of these shows went by and they didn't even mention rival schools. And you're like, yeah, no, hey, I love rival schools. Don't get me wrong, but come on. Come on. They can't even always get Street Fighter right and you want them to go make a bunch of other stuff. <laughs> um... So, yeah, I don't know. That's they did. They did show Phoenix right in the intro. I mean, yeah, do they put Mega Man in there somewhere too? Right? I mean, yeah, I don't know. Mega Man, like post Inafune Capcom, right? I mean, what is what are the franchises that matter to the people who are currently at Capcom? What gets them juiced? What are they like? I've got to get out there, and I've I'm gonna be the person. That was the problem with Street Fighter for a long time, right? Was like kind of post street fighter three things kind of went weird things went sideways arcades were not arcades anymore and it took time for someone to approach it and say yes we will be the team we want to do street fighter four here's our pitch for it let's go because you have a lot of people who you know, like you know you have to have the right passionate team to bring those franchises back so who's the team at capcom that is still there going like one of these days we are going to make the fucking most badass Power Stone reboot that the world has ever known. Like, are there people at Capcom currently that have that passion? I think that's the thing that with a lot of these companies that have been around for decades, especially, you know, some of the Japanese companies, but like 
when it comes to reviving a lot of old IP is you've got to have a champion for it. It's not as simple as just like, well, we see, I mean, for some, some franchises, maybe it is, but like, I think in a lot of cases, it's just like, it, it's not a situation where you go like, a lot of people on the internet talking about this Mega Man guy. We should do something. You, you, you're in charge of Mega Man now. Go make it happen. It, it's it's all got to kind of ha- happen organically across multiple levels or yes you farm it out and um you know some companies are, are gonna find different ways to go like oh well, well we found an external smaller developer that wants that has a really cool idea for Mega Man, and we've decided to have them do that and that's how you end up with all these silent hill rumors or whatever when you start doing those types of licensing deals to to do all that other stuff i don't know the story i always heard is uh you know after bionic commando happened that uh and, and didn't necessarily go well that one of the punishments that a producer received was like, you're in charge of the Dark Mega Man game now. <laughs> go, you, you have to go do that now. Um, that, uh, was that Armature? That Texas studio was working on that? And that got canned. Um, and uh, the first person Mega Man game that uh i think polygon eventually had a story on it like it you know it's it's one of those things that i think had become relatively open secret sort of stuff um but it got you know it it got canned before it got announced and uh maverick hunter there you go that's what it is uh and uh yeah and and then that got canned and and all that other stuff so i don't know capcom's a weird company anyway um so yeah, I don't know, like all that stuff, is, like everything they announced is for someone, right? I mean, Exo Primal is the big question mark because that's the one, you know, kind of new IP, new franchise, like, you know, hopefully that's cool, whatever. But like everything else, like, you know, hey, Resident Evil has a very sizable fan base. So when you see that stuff, you're like, fucking A, all right, yes, there's definitely absolutely a an audience for this Resident Evil stuff that is like stoked. And, you know, don't even get me started about Monster Hunter. Monster Hunter perverts are everywhere. You sickos. And you're super excited about that stuff. So, you know, like everyone gets a little piece of something out of this and someone comes away excited. But if you're just strictly coming into it with the eyeballs of like, it's E3 time, give me the new shit. Then I think you come out of it going like, hey, you know, whatevs. Um, and, and I get that too. But like, that's, you know, that's not, that ain't how that business works sometimes, right? The, the business operates on check out this gold edition Resident Evil package we're doing with the, some cool new modes and check out these free upgrades we're doing for these games for current gen consoles and and, and all that other stuff. That's that's the that's how you devote time to the breadth of the the coming catalog, right? They talked about the new stuff already. It's Street Fighter and it's the RE4 remake. So you know, yeah, Pragmata, that's been uh, missing for a little bit, a little bit now. And um, uh, yeah, so I don't know. I don't, who knows if we'll, we'll see that sort of stuff um, or, or if Pragmata is just gone now. Who, who, who knows, right? Maybe we'll never hear. Maybe that'll be, yes, maybe that will re- replace deep down as the thing people are constantly talking about and going like, what is it happening with, whatever happened with that thing? Whatever happened with that? Um. Anyway, yeah, so um, early podcast tomorrow because of the, so, I, so I've so i got to get, as I said at the top of the show, there's going to be some uh, someone in here tearing this air conditioner apart and doing all sorts of stuff, and hopefully uh, the power in this room will stay on while that happens, but just in case, I am going to start that podcast at 6 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time. We're going to get going around then very early. So if you're in uh, some other part of the country, if you're in southern part of the world, that's uh, that's probably a, a pretty sweet time um, to start. Um, but, you know, that, uh, that'll be archived, obviously. That'll be up in a podcast feed and all of that other stuff. So um, I am thinking that maybe 10 a.m. will be the normal time for that. But I'm still kind of um, thinking thinking that through. Maybe it could be a little earlier. Um, I'm usually waking up at six or seven these days, somewhere between six and eight, eight on a nice day, depending on how long that boy sleeps in, which is sometimes he just wakes up at four 30 and is awake. And then I am awake at four 30, but, uh, 
I don't want to start a podcast at 4.30 in the morning because that's insane. <laughs> um, so anyway, yes, tomorrow, 6 in the morning, here on Twitch. Uh, if you want to get the ad-free version of that show and hang out on Discord with all these hooligans over here on monitor left, uh, then you can go to patreon.com slash Jeff Gerstman for more details there. The podcast is called The Jeff Gerstman Show. It should be up on every major platform now. Google was straggling for a good long time, but it, I was looking at it earlier today there, and it seems like it's there now. Uh, I don't know why that took so long, but it took very long. Um, and yes, so we will see you in the morning, uh, and we will talk about Street Fighter. We will talk about my time with Sonic Frontiers. Yay. And we'll recap some of the shit that's happened over the past few days, stream-wise and, uh, and so forth with the news. We'll take your emails. We'll, uh, you know, we will broadcast an ad for dick pills. All of this and more, 6 a.m. tomorrow. Come hang out. Uh, and that's it. Have a good one. See you then. See you in the morning. Bye.